throughout the United States, there have been periodic outbreaks of a devastating disease of man and horses. Encephalitis, inflammation of the brain. Transmitted by the bites of infected mosquitoes, encephalitis is one of the major insect-borne diseases of this country. In 1937 and 38, hundreds of thousands of horses were affected, and in 1941, nearly 3,000 humans in western United States were stricken. In humans, the disease may affect all ages but is most severe in the very old and very young. These children are victims of arthropod-borne encephalitis. The signs and symptoms vary, but an arched back, short, rapid breathing, high fever, nausea, and convulsions are common in severe cases. There may be general tremors, rigid neck or partial spastic paralysis. Occasionally, the disease is mistaken for poliomyelitis. But residual paralysis is not common in encephalitis. If severe infection is experienced in infancy, sequelae may be mental retardation and permanent damage to the nervous system, as with this child. This youngster, stricken in infancy, showed marked improvement until he reached the age of four. Then regression set in. This picture was taken when he was six years old and almost totally helpless. In equines, encephalitis may be equally severe. There is usually a generalized involvement. Drooling is typical. Frequently, they appear confused and demonstrate poor muscular control. An agitated action of the lips is a frequent sign. Ability to walk is greatly impaired. Crossing the front legs as they walk is common, and the back may become swayed. Once down, they have great difficulty in arising, or cannot arise at all. The disease is often fatal to horses. This horse is in the terminal stages. The arthropod-borne encephalitides probably existed in the United States long before they were recognized and identified. In these states, between 1912 and 1919, there were serious outbreaks in horses of an unidentified malady which we can now be sure was encephalitis. Investigations have revealed that two distinct viruses may cause encephalitis in horses. The first of these was isolated from a fatal horse case in California in 1930. This virus causes western encephalitis, which occurs mostly in the western part of the United States. There were major outbreaks in these areas during 1937 and 38, affecting literally hundreds of thousands of horses. The largest human epidemic, involving nearly 3,000 cases, occurred in 1941 throughout the western United States and southwestern Canada. However, this virus is not confined to the west. It has been isolated from birds and mosquitoes throughout much of the United States. Human mortality rates vary from 5 to 15 percent. Eastern encephalitis appears to be restricted to the eastern seaboard, Gulf of Mexico, and localized areas in the Midwest. Human mortality rates run from 60 to 75 percent. There was a notable outbreak in Massachusetts in 1938 in humans and horses. In 1947, over 12,000 horses died of it in Louisiana and Texas. And in 1959, New Jersey suffered a severe human outbreak.
A third type of encephalitis was recognized in St. Louis in 1933 when about a thousand human cases occurred. In 1937, this virus was recognized both in the St. Louis area and in California. And notable epidemics occurred in Florida in 1959, 1961, and 1962. Under natural conditions, St. Louis encephalitis affects man, not horses. But this type is rare and less severe in children. Human mortality varies from 2 to 33 percent. St. Louis encephalitis has now been identified in all of these states and is generally distributed throughout the West. Among these three strains of encephalitis, hardly an area in the United States is safe from periodic epidemics. Wild birds constitute a reservoir of the encephalitis viruses. The natural transmission cycle is a simple one. An infected bird is fed upon by a mosquito, which then feeds on another bird. This newly infected bird is then the source of virus for other mosquitoes that spread the virus to other birds. This is the cycle that perpetuates the disease. Many species of birds are known to carry these viruses. Frequently, infected mosquitoes feed on domestic fowl, which then become a part of the transmission pattern. When the bird-mosquito-virus complex reaches a peak, mosquitoes may transmit the disease to horses, or less frequently, to man. This accounts for the irregular but devastating epizootics and epidemics. Other arthropods have been studied as possible vectors. Wood ticks, kissing bugs, and various species of mites. Mosquitoes, however, are known to be the principal vectors. 